Yesterday, Jarvis Landry made news and waves about his situation in Cleveland, tweeting out about his situation, the fact that he could possibly move on and would like to stay in Cleveland, but depending on the money and depending on the situation, he would welcome going elsewhere. However, Michael Lombardi, former Browns GM, joined Pat McAfee on the Pat McAfee Show to talk about the situation with the Browns wide receiver. Well, he doesn't have any guaranteed money, so you know. Naturally, this this is the time where the, this is the season of complaints. I mean, you know, if you have a if you have a complaint department, you're very busy this time of the year. The phone's ringing. You know, everybody's complaining. I mean, Kyler Murray's complaining. Everybody's complaining. I I have no guaranteed money. Well, what happened to all the guaranteed money we gave you from the three years before? That doesn't count. Well, I'll have any this year. Okay. So I, I just think you, you as a general manager, you just got to just block out the noise and say, okay. Here's where it is. And be honest with the player. Like, you can't lie to the guy. You can't say, oh, Jarvis, I'm going to come do your deal and then not do it. you got to be dead honest. And even if it's conversa the conversation's a little uncomfortable, you got to make it. you got to say, hey, look, Jarvis, you know, you're in the last year. We'll see where this goes next year. Jarvis, how's the family? Yeah, what, are you yeah. Yeah. what are you saying? I mean, this isn't a lemonade stand. We're not just giving out everything to everybody here. <laughs> Now, I normally disagree with Michael Lombardi on quite a bit, but when it comes to that situation, I actually tend to agree. I don't want Jarvis to leave. However, at the same time, when you have players like Jadevian Clowney possibly hitting for agency, you need to extend Denzel Ward, and obviously you have the Baker Mayfield situation hanging over the team. I think that when it comes down to it, what you're getting out of Jarvis Landry, and when it comes to the potential injuries that he said he played through, and him hitting 30, I think I'm starting to get concerned about it. And at that $16 million mark, I I'm a little weary about paying him that much. So I would look to try to re uh, restructure. We bring in Dennis Manilov from WTAM 1100. D-Man, I, I think that with the Jarvis situation, I understand that he's been a great leader in the locker room and I understand the emotions behind it. But just looking at the situation, I feel like that number is just a little too high for me, at least going into next year when you have so many players that you have to worry about little too high. <laughs> I mean, you're being generous there, Mac. Uh, first of all, I don't blame Jarvis Landry for trying to get that coin. All right. It's not guaranteed, but it's what, 14-3 guaranteed. Uh, I mean, 14-3 uh, base and then 16, a little over 16 for the cap hit. I absolutely positively do not blame Jarvis Landry for campaigning to try to guilt the Browns into – uh, signing him again, you know, for next year or, or keeping him for next year at, at, at his price, at the contract price, even though it's not guaranteed, it would be then. Um, but at the same time, the Browns have to say no, okay? Uh, the Browns can try to renegotiate with him and negotiate a, a, a much lower number. I don't think Jarvis and his ego and his pride is going to accept that. And But if you're the Browns, you've got to move on. You cannot get stuck paying Jarvis Landry uh, eight digits to, or what is it, eight? Yeah, six, eight digits. Yeah, yeah, you can't, got it. <laughs> can't get stuck paying him that amount of money, given that he's, you know, his production is down. He'll say it's because of injuries. Okay, but I'm not buying it. I'm saying that part of it, at least, is a is the uh, tied to. You know his skill, his skills, and his speed, and everything else. So, I'm going to say, as much as I love Jarvis, pros pro. Yes, he's been a good leader for the Browns in his four years, but it's time to move on simply because he's too expensive. And, and I completely agree. And, and you mentioned too the the speed, but you know, especially for him who coming into the league wasn't the most athletic player coming out of college and already starts to see some of those injuries pile up as the season went on. Once you hit 30, that's when I start to worry about it. But